tonight, starring Charles Boyer. I want you to pack your things and leave Grand City this afternoon. I'll tell Gary you were called back to New York on business. Why didn't you just tell Gary the truth? You had the opportunity. You apparently don't understand my husband. To a man like him, cheating at cards is no laughing matter. No, I suppose it isn't. On Four Star Playhouse, we present Charles Boyer in Let the Chips Fall. I'm Fabian Peck. Oh, yes. Please come in, Mr. Peck. Thank you. I'll take that. Oh, oh thanks. Please do sit down. May I fix you a drink, Mr. Peck? Uh, no, thank you. Uh, Mr. Andrews, you're probably wondering uh, who I am and why I called you this morning to arrange this meeting. Naturally. <laughs> Naturally. Well, uh, as to who I am, uh, my home is in Grand City. I used to be a wheat broker. Uh, I'm retired now. A mutual friend of ours suggested that I call upon you, uh, Mr. O'Brien, uh, Jim O'Brien? Oh, yes. Jim O'Brien. A fine man. And a truly great detective. Oh, he speaks very highly of you. <laughs> Jim and I have been friends for a good many years. Well, he told me a great deal about you. He said that, uh, well, uh, confound it, this is embarrassing. Mr. Andrews, there's no use beating around the bush. He told me that you are probably the most expert card manipulator living today. Oh, he flatters me. He told me that you, for several years, made an excellent living playing cards. That is until, well, uh, You mean until Jim and a friendly judge decided to send me away on a five-year vacation? You can speak freely, Mr. Peck. For many years, I was known as a card shop. I was eventually caught, convicted, and I served my sentence. Now I'm reformed. Or you might say I am, well, like yourself, retired. <laughs> well, uh, thank you for saying it for me. <laughs> I hope that takes care of your embarrassment, Mr. Peck. Now, please do sit down. Now. Uh, you've come to me because Jim O'Brien told you I was a card shop. Now, I'll ask you the obvious question. Why? Well, I wish to engage you uh, uh, professionally. I am one of a group who belong to the Chess and Whist Club in Grand City. For several years now, six of us have met on Wednesday nights to play poker. Now, we play for rather high stakes. Of course, a uh, few dollars, uh, one or loss of an evening doesn't worry us. Uh, we play, really, for the fun of the game. Uh, do you follow me? Of course. Well, Mr. Andrews, several months ago, we invited a new man to join our poker group. Now, it's this new man that I wish to discuss, since, uh, well, uh, some of us are afraid he's not playing the game honestly. A cheat? Oh, only a suspicion. We have no proof. A card sharp as a member of a wealthy poker club. Well... <laughs> Forgive me, Mr. Peck, I don't mean to make light of the situation, but uh, the idea appeals to me, or would have, at one time. Oh, it's very upsetting, Mr. Andrews. Now, now, when we invited Gary Anker to join our poker group, we checked his background, of course. Yes, of course. He comes from good stock, married, nice home, solid business in Grand City. Now, why should a man like that want to cheat? Now, you said uh, you were not certain he was cheating. Uh, no, we're not, but uh, for several months now, he's been winning consistently, and we began to wonder. He never loses. Never. It's no fun playing anymore. Now, if Gary Anker is a cheat, he must be made to resign. But if he's been winning on luck, then we all owe him a mental apology. Uh, do you understand? You make it very clear. Then on behalf of myself and my friends, I wish to engage you to return with me to Grand City. You could observe our game and do us a great service. Of course, we'll pay all expenses and whatever fee you think uh, reasonable. Mr. Peck, 
I shall be happy to go back to Grand City with you. After all, this is a highly unusual occasion. And I like the idea. I like it very much. Mr. Peck. Good evening, Paul. I want you to meet Mr. Roger. He'll be a guest of the club for a while. How do you do, sir? Paul. Uh, nothing now, Paul. We'll order when the game starts. Yes, sir. Well, the others ought to be here soon. They know about me, of course. Oh, all except Anchor. Now, I'll introduce you under the name we agreed upon. Well, I'm sure that Anchor will suspect nothing. Do you wish me to join in the game? Oh, yes. Now, any winnings of yours will be turned back to us, and we'll reimburse you for anything you lose. Fair enough. Well, there he is. The first to show up, Gary Anker. Evening, Fabian. Gary? Where is everybody? Well, we seem to be the first here. Gary, I want you to meet a friend of mine, Philip Roger. Philip, this is Gary Anker. How do you do? It's a pleasure, Mr. Roger. You're a poker player, I hope. Of sorts. I've invited Philip to join our game. He'll be in Grand City for a few weeks, and, well, I thought he might enjoy it. Well, I feel lucky tonight. Of course, you understand we play mainly for the fun of the game. What else? Oh, Grinnell and Morgan just came in. Shall we join them? Up you, Sheridan. Too steep for me. I should raise you, Gary. Go right ahead. All right. Up five. Are you with us, Roger? I think not. Never was a good man for a bluff. I'm out. Well, I think I can. No, I better wait. Count me out. Morgan? I'll go for the raise. I'll meet that. And raise five more. It's up to you, Sam. I'll call. Ace high straight? <laughs> Beats my three ladies. Make us the last hand. So early. It's getting pretty late, Gary. Deal me a good hand, Sheridan. I can use one. I'll do my best. Right How about one last drink for the road? Well, Sheridan, will you join us for one last drink? Sorry, Gary, I have a big day tomorrow. Uh, nice meeting you, Mr. Roger. Nice to meet you. I hope we see you again. Good night. Good night. Fabian? Good night. Gary? Good night. Well, should we sit up at the bar? Well, it's late. Edith will start worrying by the time I drop Philip off at the hotel and then drive home. Hotel? Now, look, Fabian, what kind of a host are you, letting Mr. Roger here stay at a hotel? Oh, I'm quite comfortable, I assure you. Well, you see, uh, Edith decided last week to remodel, and the, the house is all cluttered up with painters and paint pots, and I'm thinking of going to a hotel myself. No, we can't have this. Look, I have an idea. Helen's gone to New York on a shopping spree, and I'm all alone in that great big house of mine. I'd be glad to have you as my guest, Roger. Oh, it's extremely kind of you, but I don't want to impose. Now, don't refuse me, please. As a matter of fact, you'd be doing me a favor. When Helen's away on a trip, I'm bored stiff. Where are you staying? At the Standish. And let me send a car around for you first thing in the morning. Well... I won't take no for an answer. Well, I can only thank you for your kindness. Oh, yes, it's, uh, it's very nice of you, Gary. Uh, 
It's a shame that Edith chose this time to redecorate. Good night, Fabian. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. I wish we could have avoided that, Mr. Peck. It's, um, it's embarrassing. Yes, but what could you do? You couldn't refuse him without seeming rude. This is a pretty open-handed character, your suspect. Yes, he is that. But about, uh, well? Hmm? Oh, you mean his uh, playing technique? Yes, what do you think? Well, I watched him closely. Yes? I'd rather withhold my opinion for another week, if you don't mind. Uh, I'd like to observe him in another game. Of course, of course. We want you to be absolutely certain, one way or another. I shall be, Mr. Peck, one way or another. Night, Captain? Yes, I love one. Well, what would you like to do tomorrow? Rest. You know, you've shown me a very active week. Golf, races, more golf, theater. Yes, and you beat me at golf, picked two winners against my advice, and even guessed what would happen in the last act of the play. Hey. Phil, I'm a man who likes competition, but I also like to win. How about another game of golf tomorrow? Give me a chance to get even. All right. But I probably will be too exhausted to pick up my poker hand tomorrow night. Oh, that's right. Tomorrow is Wednesday. Well, I'll save my revenge for the game, then. Do you always win at poker, Gary? Oh, I'm a pretty lucky guy at cards. I usually manage pretty well. Surprise! Oh, I'm sorry, darling. I thought you were alone. Is it business? No, it isn't. And even if it were, I'd still want you to break it. <laughs> Gary. Oh, well. My wife's from Boston, Philip, and in Boston, they never kiss in front of strangers. <laughs> Darling, I want you to meet my friend, Philip Roger. How do you do? How do you do, Mrs. Anker? Have we met Mr. Roger? I have the feeling I've seen you before. I don't think so. I'm sure I would have remembered you, Mrs. Anker. Phil's staying with us for a while, darling. He's a friend of Fabian Peck's. Well, good. I hope Gary's made you comfortable. Most comfortable, I assure you. I practically forced him to stay. But I told him I was bored with you in New York, and I won. Oh, so was I. That's why I cut short my trip and came home. Well, you might have called from the station. But it's a pleasant surprise anyway, darling. <laughs> Gary. Oh, let's forget Boston. You know, I think it would be much simpler to forget me. So if you'd excuse me. Oh, no, please. Really, Gary, you've embarrassed our guests. Uh, not at all, Mrs. Anker. Your husband hasn't embarrassed me. He has exhausted me. As you must know, he's an enthusiastic golfer. And while I can, perhaps, match his enthusiasm, I have a hard time matching his energy. I'm really very tired. Well, of course, if you're tired, good night. It's nice to have you with us. Good night, Mrs. Anker. Good night, Gary. Good night, Phil. What a guy. He's a real sweetheart, darling. He seems very nice. And yet I've seen him somewhere before. I'm almost certain of it. Good morning, sir. Mr. Anker up yet? No, sir. But Mrs. Anker is in the study having coffee. She asked me to invite you to join her. Oh, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I see you share Gary's energy. Up so early? I'm always up early. I thought you might join me for some coffee. Oh, that's very charming of you. Cream, sugar? No, just black, thank you. All right. There you are, Mr. Andrews. Thank you. It is Andrews, isn't it? Roger Andrews? We can drop the pretense. I know who you are and what you are. I also think I know what you're doing here, and I don't like it. I'm surprised you don't deny that you're Roger Andrews. It shows an integrity that's rather unusual in a man like you. Not integrity. Just common sense. Very wise. You must be wondering how I know about you. You see, we have met before, and after a great deal of thought last night, I remembered where. Your memory is better than mine. It was nine years ago, crossing the Atlantic on the Victoria. Oh, well, I, I made the trip many times. Yes, and you played cards with a great many people. One of them was my father, Henry Bannister. Bannister? Yes, I remember the name. He lost a great deal of money to you. I can remember watching you play. I was fascinated. Of course, you didn't notice me. Well, you must forgive me, Mrs. Anker. You see, 
a gambler must concentrate on his cards. Uh, that is, if he wants to win. Oh, you won, consistently. Father suspected you. He, he even tried to have you arrested when we docked, but you were very elusive. And now I suggest that you again become elusive, Mr. Andrews. Leave Grand City. I see. And if I don't leave? Then I shall inform the police of your plan. My plan? It's obvious, isn't it? You've talked Gary and Mr. Peck and the others into accepting you. You've gained their trust. And now you wait for the right opportunity and then swindle them. Yes, I suppose it is an obvious assumption on your part. Good morning, Phil. Good morning, Gary. Get a good rest? Very good, thanks. Fine, fine. Shall I have Henry fix you some breakfast, darling? No time. I just got a business call. I'll get something to eat downtown. Phil, I hate to run out on you like this, but I'm sure Helen will take good care of you. I'm sure she will. Well, I've got to go. I hope I can wind up my business in time for tonight's game. Oh, that's right. This is poker night, isn't it? Yes, and let me give you fair warning, Phil. Last week I was being polite because you were new. But tonight I'm going to play for blood, so watch out. Thank you for telling me. Goodbye, darling. See you tonight, Phil. Goodbye, Gary. Gary? Yes? Oh, nothing, dear. It isn't important. Good luck today. Thanks, dear. Goodbye. May I? Thank you. You're very charming, Mr. Andrews. I'm not surprised that Gary's so taken by you. You'll be disappointed that you missed tonight's game. Oh, I see. And you are the reason why I will miss the game, I take it. Exactly. I want you to pack your things and leave Grand City this afternoon. I'll tell Gary you will call back to New York on business. Why didn't you just tell Gary the truth? You had the opportunity. My husband doesn't show it, Mr. Andrews, but actually he's very disturbed. His business has troubled him for several months. And I'm sure that it would just upset him more to learn that a man he likes and trusts is a swindler. Oh, I don't know. One of your husband's qualities is his marvelous sense of humor. Perhaps he would have thought it was quite a joke. You apparently don't understand my husband. But then how could you? To a man like him, cheating at cards is no laughing matter. No, I suppose it isn't. <laughs> yes, it certainly is an unexpected development. I could hardly argue with that. Hardly. Well, tonight you can tell Gary that business wasn't as pressing as you thought, so you came back. Right. Tonight I can give you my decision and leave for good. Tell me, what do you know about Gary's business? Is it good? Yes, I think so. He's in furniture, has a nice setup. At least it seems sound when he checked it last year. Why do you ask? Oh, just curiosity. Anchor is an interesting man. I became quite fond of him during the past week. Yes, we all took to him right off. Well, suppose we return to the card room and wait for the others. Sorry to be late. I got caught in a traffic jam. It's all right, Bill. Gary Anker hasn't shown up yet. Well, it isn't like Gary to be late. Peck tells us you'll be able to tell us about, uh, well, about Gary after tonight's game. I think so. Message, Mr. Peck. It's quite a strain playing under a cloud of doubt the way we have been. It certainly is. The game's not the same. It's from Gary. He phoned in that he's tied up in the business deal and to start without him. He'll join us later if he can get away. Mm, wouldn't you know? It's first night he's missed in six months. Well, let's play. There's no use just sitting here. Pass out the chips, Fabian. Yes, let's get started. All right. Sheridan. Bill. And Grinnell. Morgan. And one for myself. Now, let's see who's going to deal. Wish Anchor were here, but five-handed poker is better than no poker at all. I have a jack. I always get a deuce. Just a ten. I got an ace. My deal. Why don't you go out and get yourself a drink? Excuse me a moment, gentlemen. 
I told you earlier that I would prefer another night of play with Mr. Anchor before making my report, but that was merely to double-check uh, the conclusion I reached last week. Uh, since it appears that Mr. Anchor may not show up, I might as well tell you now the result of my observations. Are you sure? Oh, I never make a statement until I'm sure, Mr. Peck. But I would prefer to make my report now and leave for New York tonight. Of course, if you're certain, well, what do you think? Well, I have watched uh, Mr. Anker's play closely. And I can assure you that he plays an absolutely square game. Well... <laughs> Mr. Anker's consistent winning is due entirely to the fact that he knows more about poker than all of you gentlemen put together will ever know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't tell you how glad we are to hear that. Well, now if you'd excuse me, I'll let you go on with your game. I have a train to catch. Well, I'm sorry you're in such a rush, Andrews. Oh, I better write you out a check. No, no, you just send it to my New York address. I'm in a hurry. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. My hat and coat, please. Yes, sir. Give me a straight scotch. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, you can just sign for it, sir. I can? Why? Well, it's, it's perfectly all right, sir. I'm afraid you're mistaken. I don't belong here. Keep the change. Thank you. Hey, what is this? I thought you ran out on us. Helen said you were on your way back to New York. Well, uh, I missed my reservation, so I dropped in here to say goodbye. Well, I'm glad I got a chance to see you, too. Why all this rush back to New York? Oh, um, some business trouble, that's all. Well, I hope you're as lucky as I've been. I found out today that my business is finally on its feet again. I haven't felt this relieved in six months. It was pretty tight for a while. Oh? Yes, but it looks fine from here on. I hope you have the same luck, Phil, and it's been wonderful having you with us, even for a short week. You've been very kind to me, Gary. You accepted me at face value and gave me your friendship without question. For this, I'm very grateful. Don't be silly. You'd have done the same for me. Yes, I would. Because I like you. Have time for one last drink? No, I'm afraid not. But um, there is something I'd like to say. Really, Phil? What is it? You know, Gary, you're a fortunate man. Your business is in solid shape now. You have a wonderful wife, good friends. These are worth hanging on to. Don't risk losing them. I don't quite follow you, Phil. Then perhaps you can follow this. Your business was bad, and you've been forced to supplement your income with the money you won at poker. Phil, are you sick? No. Nor do I think you are anymore. I'll check back with Peck in a few weeks to see if your winning streak has continued. But I don't think it will be necessary. What do you mean? I mean, I'm sure you'll find a way to repay the money you've taken without their knowing it. And I'm sure you'll want to. Are you really talking about poker? Come, come, Gary, what else? I was onto your tricks ten minutes after the game began. They were crude, but effective. No one knows but you and I, Gary. Why not think it over? Then, if you still feel like playing poker, fine. But from now on, play a square game. Good luck, Gary. And I thank you again for the kindness you've showed me. George. Yes, sir. My hat and coat. I think I'll go home. Yes, sir. Next week, singer Four Star Playhouse will bring you David Niven in the role of an influential New York dramatic critic whose self-confidence is surprisingly challenged by a lovely young actress, David Niven in a strong romantic role, next week on Singer Four Star Playhouse.